Hello, my name is Sheila Coring, and I'm one of the directors of studies in archaeology and biological anthropology at Sydney Sussex College. Today, what I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of a opportunity to see why Sydney Sussex might be an excellent choice when applying for archaeology and biological anthropology. Now, as you can see here, a um, bit of screen sharing, but some of you may not actually know much about archaeology and biological anthropology. They are part of the social sciences, and we study everything from medieval politics to Akkadian languages to um, understanding the genetics um, of immunological responses to the evolution of symbolic behavior in humans. So we cover a huge breadth um, of different kinds of disciplines with a foot both in the natural sciences and the social sciences. So many of you who've taken the natural sciences or politics, geography, history, might have a look at archaeology and biological anthropology. Briefly then, um, in our part one, we have one one-year part one, we take some core classes that introduce you to world archaeology, to understanding data and data analyses, um, to understanding, say, Egypt and Mesopotamia, if that's your interest, to an introduction to what biological anthropology has to offer in terms of primates and um, human variation. Then in your part two, you specialize into different kinds of trajectories, whether that be an archeology, span a biological anthropology, or a Egyptology and ancient Near East um, trajectory. Although there are joint paper options in your part two as well. I should also say, because of the great breadth of archaeology and biological anthropology, we've arranged that our students can take various papers from other kinds of triposts because there is so much diversity in what we study. So oftentimes students will take pa um, papers from psychology or classics, sociology, politics, or um, ASNAC. But the real thing that we want to talk about today is Sydney Sussex College. If you want to find out more about archaeology and biological anthropology, do attend one of our master classes or the open days in the, from the department. But applying to Sydney means that you'd be joining a very small but very vibrant community, both in terms of the college itself, but also within, our, within archaeology and anthropology. We've had a very long tradition um, with several different fellows over time, looking at everything from Southeast Asia to classical Greece to my own work, which is in prehistoric technologies in Western Europe. So you'd be joining this kind of diverse community, but also as a director of studies at another college as well, at Clare College, what we've done is we've created a community within the two colleges, which allow our students to feel part of a archeology span and biological anthropology cohort. Most colleges only take one or two archaeology students. So this gives you an opportunity to be part of a specific community as well. And as such, we try to bring the community together several times a year. And some of the kinds of activities that we have recently done, including arranging talks from our ex-students. So an ex-student who became a lawyer and works in environmental uh, issues a biological anthropology student who has worked in public health and the NHS, and an archeology span student who is now doing his own research, but also using 
um, 3D modeling and creating images for heritage and museums. We've also done a range of object handling activities, um, particularly with the issues of the pandemic. Bringing them into college meant that we could have a little bit of private and more specific time to enrich the, the um, practicals that you get in the department. So we focused particularly this last year on flint analysis and getting to handle um, actual flints from British um, projects. We also then had get togethers where we could talk and just share some of our concerns or some of the kinds of research programs that we were developing. So our students came together to talk about field work how you go about selecting the kind of field work that's best for you, what you might expect from field work. We also have had a range of dissertation workshops where some of our more senior figures have come in and talked to our undergraduates about how they created and went through the process of doing an undergraduate or master's degree um, dissertation. We've also brought together our part two Bs to share sort of their own dissertation research and help them be able to talk about it in a friendly and informal environment. And finally, we had a mock exam uh, session just recently where we all came together again in a much less stressed environment where we then could do this practice exam, but then also sit and share together as a community some of our worries, some of those things that we um, hadn't expected. And this comes back to why Sydney? Not only is it a vibrant community, but our students participate, they share, they feel like they can contribute to the college, but also to a small active cohort in archaeology and biological anthropology. So I do encourage you to consider um, thinking about Sydney Sussex College when you're looking for archaeology and biological anthropology. If you haven't considered archaeology and biological anthropology, but you know that your interest rests in understanding history, interpreting through the social sciences, looking at natural sciences, but in human variation and primatology, then again, do consider what this tripos can provide. Thank you for listening.